Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to the easy peasy guide for Eden's Promise Umbra Savage, better known as E9S. Before we start, go ahead and click on the like button and subscribe to the channel so more adventurers like you can help get their clears. It takes less than a GCD, but however you want to support the channel is cool by me. And while there are several different strategies for handling all the mechanics in this fight, I'll just be going over the strategies we use to get our clear. To start us off, we placed our markers in this configuration as they'll be important for a few mechanics later on. You'll want to assign clock positions for your party and form two four-man groups consisting of a tank, a healer, and two DPS. For clock positions, we put our tanks and healers on the cardinal spots and the DPS on the intercardinal spots. This configuration is critical to handling a mechanic later in the fight. First up, we have a raid-wide AoE called Ground Raising Particle Bee. Then you'll want to get into your clock positions immediately after. She'll then cast the Art of Darkness, which will be one of two mechanics depending on her animation. If you see both of her side orbs glowing like this, the DPS will want to stack with their tank or healer partners. If you see her body charging up with this animation, you'll want to stay in your clock positions. She'll then cast the Art of Darkness again, which will always be the opposite mechanic than the first one. So if it's clock positions first, then it will be partners next. Likewise, if it was partners first, then it will be clock positions next. Coming up next is Devouring Dark, which is the tank buster, so do your standard tank swap here. Tanks will also want to stay away from each other here, as the second tank will take a laser beam to the face. She'll then cast Obscure Woods. The stage will change, and soon after she'll cast Flood of Obscurity. Lots of different strategies exist for this mechanic, but we found this strat the most effective for movement and DPS uptime. During the cast, you'll want to stand on the corners of these markers with your partners as you see here. During the Flood of Obscurity cast, make sure you hit your anti-knockback ability so you don't get pushed back out of position. An egg will drop on everyone, so you'll want to make sure that you place your eggs correctly as their briar patches will remain up for the rest of this phase. She'll then cast Rejuvenating Balm immediately after you drop your eggs. You'll want to look for the two purple tethers coming from the boss. These tethers will always appear opposite of each other, and they attach themselves to two towers on the outside of the stage. These two towers will eventually explode with massive AoEs around them. Moments later, each party member will get two briar tethers attached to them, one to the nearest egg, and one to another party member. The tethers on the party will always attach themselves between a DPS and a tank or a healer. Because we know this, we have the DPS stack at either south or east, while we have the tanks and healers go and stack north or west, depending on where those purple tethers spawn. You'll always want to stack away from those purple tethers. Once the briar tethers come out, run straight through the middle towards the other side of the stage to break the tethers from your fellow party members and the eggs. After the break, be careful not to go too far back into the middle as the two towers on the sides of the stage will explode. Next, you'll cast one of two mechanic sets that happen here, either Anti-Air Phaser Unlimited or Wide Angle Phaser Unlimited. Keep in mind that whichever mechanic set you get here during your runs, you'll always get the other mechanic set later. So we'll just go over each mechanic set as they appear in one of our clear videos. For Anti-Air Phaser Unlimited, she'll attach two yellow tethers to a tower on the outside of the stage. Follow the yellow tethers, and at this point, you'll want to start to get into your party groups. How I work this out in my brain is that whatever tower she attaches herself to, that's going to be the new north. One group will take the left side, while the other group will take the right side. She'll then jump to that tower, and three mechanics come out in succession. First is an AoE around her, where you have to disengage. The second is massive AoEs appearing on each tank, with smaller AoEs appearing on each of the healers. Tanks will have to disengage from the party while the healers and DPS from each group stack at their respective edges. After those AoEs resolve, tanks should come back in and stack with their respective groups. The third mechanic will go off, which is a wide-angle beam that covers most of the stage, except for those two safe spots. After that, pull the boss back into the middle and prepare for a raid-wide AoE. She'll then cast the second Art of Darkness. One of her orbs will light up on either her left or right side. Depending on which orb she lights up will determine which side she'll cleave. Next, it'll either be clock positions or stack with your partners depending on her next animations. For example here, she cleaved her right side and we stacked with our partners. In this case, she cleaved on her left side and we spread to our clock positions. Just remember, you might see different mechanics here during your run. 
Next, she'll cast her second mechanic set here. In our case, it's the Wide Angle Phaser Unlimited. Same as before, she'll throw out two yellow tethers to a tower on the outside of the stage and just follow those tethers to that side. Again, three mechanics come out in succession. At this point, have your party group stack all the way to the edge. The first mechanic is the Wide Angle Beam. Right after that, tanks should separate themselves from their groups. Four cone AoEs come out, hitting each tank and each healer and DPS group. As soon as you see those cone AoEs go off, disengage as her third mechanic will be an AoE around her. It comes out really fast, but if you move away during that second mechanic hit, you'll dodge it every single time. Pull her back to the middle of the stage, and she'll begin to cast Devouring Dark, which is the tank buster with a laser to the face. She'll then jump to the middle, face north, and then start to cast Empty Plane. The stage will change again, and for this phase, we're gonna have to do a bit of shuffling. Before we continue on the rest of the fight, let's first take a look at the stage configuration as its own mechanics play an important role into how we navigate this phase. There are 12 squares, 8 around the boss in clock positions, and 4 outside squares on the cardinals. If a player is on a square, that square will light up like this. If you stand on the same square for too long, it will change to a panic square, and then a moment later it will disappear, making your character fall through the floor and die. If two or more players are standing in a single square at the same time, the panic square comes up and the floor will disappear. So the idea here is that you can only have one player per square at any moment in time. Also keep in mind that after every mechanic, you'll want to shuffle to another square, so you'll reset the timer on that square that you're standing on. Now, with that knowledge in mind, let's continue the fight. First, you'll want to assign clock positions for your group around the boss. These spots will be your primary squares for the duration of this phase. As a general rule of thumb, you'll want to put your DPS on the cardinal spots because there will be cloud adds that spawn a bit later. But you can assign clock spots to whoever you want depending on your party configuration. She'll cast Hypercharge Condensation, which will place four cloud adds on the outside panels. The mechanic will also place a voice debuff on the whole party. Whoever's on the cardinal panels, simply move to your respective empty panel towards the back of the stage and stand in front of your cloud ad and DPS them down. Standing in front of these cloud ads will slow their movement so you'll have more time to DPS them. While folks are hitting their ads on the outside panels, the intercardinal folks on the inside panels should shuffle one panel over and then back to their original. Your group can choose to go either clockwise or counterclockwise, just make sure that you're all on the same page when you're shuffling. Also, this will be the normal shuffle movement after every mechanic during this phase. The voice debuff soon goes off, so you'll want to face your character away from everyone else. Once your cloud adds are dead, move back to your original panels and stay close to the boss. She'll cast a donut AoE around the entire stage. Do a little shuffle on your panels, and then one of her orbs will light up, meaning that she'll cleave one side of the stage. Your party has to coordinate shuffling squares to the opposite side of the stage, so everyone can avoid these AoEs. In our case here, the boss will cleave her right side. So these squares on the left side are the safe squares. There are eight squares on the safe side, which is exactly enough for eight people. So to start off the shuffle chain, three DPS who aren't getting cleaved will move to their back squares. One person will move in to fill the DPS square here, this person moves two squares over to here, and the last two people will move into the remaining empty squares. If you're on these four squares, make sure that you're standing on the correct side as the cleave will go right through the middle of those squares. Then after the cleave goes off, simply reverse the shuffle process and move back to your original squares. Next, she'll either cast her partner stacks or clock position mechanics, so pay attention to her animations. Do one last panel shuffle after that, and then she'll change the stage back into the original configuration. She'll then cast Summon, which will place two adds on the outside of the stage. She'll then light up an orb and cleave half of the stage. The thing to note here is that the adds on the outside will also cleave the same side as the boss. So there's only a small pizza slice of a safe spot here on the stage when you find it. What helps me out with this mechanic is that for our group, we just follow our raid leader who has the safety triangle on his head, and if we mess up, it's his fault. But if you're the raid leader for your group, use the process of elimination. First, take a look at the boss and dodge to her safe side first. Then, look at only one of the adds on the outside, and then move to the safe quadrant. Then, look at the next ad and do the same thing. For me, using the process of elimination is a way better way to determine the safe zone rather than trying to calculate the safe zone while looking at the boss and all of the adds at the same time. She'll then cast Devouring Dark, which is the tank buster with the laser to the face. Next, she'll cast the third Art of Darkness. And you've seen all of these mechanics before, but this time they'll happen in a set of three. Pay attention to her mechanics here as she'll cleave one side of the stage, 
give you either clock positions or partner stacks, and then cleave the other side of the stage. She'll then cast Obscure Woods, which will change the stage, and drop your eggs near your markers like before. This time, there are no purple tethers, so you can always have your tanks and healers stack north and your DPS stack south in preparation to break your briar tethers. But this time, after you break your briar tethers, eight towers will spawn around the stage, four on the inside and four in the corners. After you break your tethers, each person will want to stand in their own tower. Next, she'll throw out her yellow tethers again and cast one of two mechanics, the Wide Angle Phase Unlimited or Anti-Air Phaser Unlimited. Handle those mechanics like you did previously. Pull her back to the middle for a raid-wide AoE. She'll then cast Rejuvenating Bomb, so look out for those purple tethers attaching themselves to the outside towers. This time we have the ranged DPS and tanks stacked together at north, while the melees and healers stack at south. We switched up the party stacks here, so it's easier to handle the next two mechanics, cleaving one side of the stage with her orb, and either a partner stack or clock positions. Her orb and the towers will explode at the same time, so just dodge those and then move to your clock positions or partner stacks. There's going to be a devouring dark tank buster next, and then she'll change the stage again to the panels, so handle that stage exactly like you did before. And to be honest, our group never saw Enrage on this fight, so I don't know what happens next after the panels. But I'm pretty sure that you've seen all the mechanics for this fight, so it's simply a matter of increasing your DPS in order to get your clear. And our group had an average item level of 510, so if your group has about that, then this fight will be no problem for you. And man, I gotta tell you, E9S was a great fight. Uh, a great starting fight, and it was difficult too. Like, on our second week uh, re-clears, it took us three hours to re-clear this fight because we had completely forgotten it by that time. Um, but to give you an idea, it took us three hours to clear E9S, and then we went into E10S, and it pretty much took us uh, two pulls in order to clear that fight. So that gives you an idea of how difficult the fight is. Um, it's really great, I enjoy it, and hopefully you guys get your clears, and that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this guide has helped you out and your team. Uh, thanks to my team and my raid leader who spent like a lot of time researching and studying these fights so we could just knock it out pretty quickly. And especially to you, the community, thank you guys for uh, watching and I hope it helps you out. Uh, every once in a while I get tells and messages in game saying how much you love these guides and how it helped you out and uh, I couldn't be more happier. So if you see me in game, send me a tell, it'll be awesome. And also if you want to help out the channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the like button because that's what all the YouTube kids are doing these days. So until next time, enjoy your clears and keep on adventuring.